I can't say I'm surprised because PBC has been having some significant issues over the last four or five years or so, mostly with the uh, matchmaking when it's non pay per view fights, and well now it's just the sh just the sheer amount of pay per views that we're getting from them. In fact, coming up on October the nineteenth next weekend, Tim Zhu is going to be taking on Bakram Murtazalia for the IBF title in their first free. I guess you can say free. It's on Amazon Prime non pay per view event since David Morrell against uh, some Abeko guy December the 16th of last year. We are now in October. It is October the 9th, 2024. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360. And in just a little over two months away, Tank Davis is going to be taking on Lamont Roach. And Lamont Roach is moving up to 135 pounds. This fight is going to be on pay-per-view for likely 90 bucks, 85 maybe, give or take. Now listen, I'm a Dang, I'm a Tank Davis fan. I like Tank Davis. Uh exciting fighter, but it is in no way where they can expect for fans to like be all in on this fight. For example, you have a guy like Leonard Ellerby. He'll say stuff like, ah, oh, well, you know, it's a great fight and Tank is, a, is an attraction and all that. But really, in reality, fans don't give a, like, a fuck about that bullshit. For example, look how he's getting slaughtered in the, in the comments of this Instagram post from his page. This ain't it, bro. Most of your peers are fighting each other or taking big risks. We can't keep doing this. The fight, the fight no one asked for. Fight Shakira, damn. Who is this nigga? Look like a spirit airline employee. I'm putting my children tuition and my mortgage on this, bro. You could not make me rich. Well, whatever. Wow. Gambling degenerate. So what I'm saying is, it's here's the thing. Me being a boxing degenerate, I'm going to try to find ways for the fight to be exciting. I'm going to be like, you know what? Lamont wrote chicken, but you know, if he can't, you know, Frank Ro Frank Martin would beat Lamont Roach. Now, here's the undercard. I guess I can backtrack a little bit before I start shredding this fight to smithereens. The undercard could possibly feature Jamel Charlo taking on Demetrius Andre. Excuse me, no, Jamal Charlo taking on Demetrius Andre. Both fighters are in camp, as you can see. I went to check out here. Uh, I don't know why he's got Jake Paul tagged, but let's see what this says. Uh, from uh, Jamal Charlo's Instagram. So he's back in the gym, and also you can see Demetrius Andrade is back in the gym. Uh, so it's a possibility that's heavily rumored that that can be the uh, chief support co-feature. Uh, we're supposed to get Brandon Figueroa taking on. Here's the ESPN story right here. Brandon Figueroa taking on Stephen Fulton in a long awaited rematch. Stephen Fulton didn't look good. And frankly, I don't know if he's going to have enough to keep Brandon Fulton off of him. You know, it is going to be at 126 pounds, though, because uh, apparently uh, the 126 pound champion for the WBC Ray Vargas, who should have lost to Nick Ball, in my opinion, he's hurt, injured, champion in recess. So Figueroa uh, is the full champion, and him and Fulton are going to be fighting. So, so far, so, so far, my bad, doggone notifications and phone keeps ringing. You know, anyway, uh, as I was saying, Brenda Figueroa, uh, in my opinion, is going to maul Stephen Fulton. I'm just not seeing enough from Stephen Fulton, especially after, you know, his last fight. You know, he just didn't look good. And Figueroa, even though both of these guys have been somewhat inactive, they're not really fresh. And another fight is supposed to be Carlos Adamas versus, who do they say he's possibly going to be fighting? Basically in a showcase fight. And then also Alberto Puglio and Sandor Martin. So you have Tank Davis versus Lamont Roach. Jamal Charlo versus Demetrius Andre. Now, this is all speculation. Stephen Fulton versus Brandon Figueroa. Carlos Adamas in a title defense. Remember, he's the WBC 160-pound champion. He's got Jamal Charlo's belt. Uh, and Alberto Pulio versus Sandor Martin, likely on the prelims. Or one of those fights could end up on the prelims. It could be Adamas, depending. So, but 
Now, now that, that's some intriguing fights. Yeah, we're getting Jamal Charlo and Drake years late. And Jamal Charlo, he's got to get it back with with Caleb Plant. You can't let him smack you and just don't don't fight him. I'm sorry, that's got to happen. Uh, Figueroa versus Fulton is going to be a fun fight. But in reality, this is, how can I say, uh, Tank Davis, he's supposed to be, to a lot of fans, the face of boxing. Canelo Alvarez, to a lot of fans, the face of boxing. But what I'm trying to say is whatever you, whoever you think, whoever is your face of boxing, both of these guys are PBC Al Heyman fighters and they're taking, they're taking uh, safe fights. With Belanga, Mungia, okay, that was a, you know, I, I, I found that fight intriguing. Lamont Roach, Frank Martin, for example. Let's go look at the resume of Tank Davis. You know, the criticism is starting to pile up. I posted something uh, about a week or so ago. In fact, let me go see if I can find it on my, uh, on my Facebook. And it was about how when Floyd Mayweather had just turned 30 years old, or before he had turned 30, he was out there putting boots to asses. And that's when he transitioned from being pretty boy to uh, to Money Mayweather. He fought Oscar De La Hoya. He moved up. And as they say, here you go. They dared to be great. Here's something I posted. 29-year-old pretty boy Floyd Mayweather would have went up to 140 and took Rayo's belt. Likely stopped him. He just turned 30. His first fight at 154. He fought Oscar. Tank will be 30 in November. He'll be 30 next month. Make of that what you will. This tells you how I feel about the Roach fight. Now, he went up to 140 to fight Mario Barrios, but yet they wanted Rayo to come back down to 135. And then now he's bringing up Lamont Roach. Now, I know it's not Tank. I know his team, Al Heyman and PBC and his guys. It's them. It's them. He is. You know, now, here's the thing. Canelo is under the PBC banner, but. How can I say uh, he pulls more strings to me than Tank Davis does. Tank Davis does what they tell him to do. And Tank Davis is PBC. If you think about it, Wilder's done. Spence, yes, he's supposed to be fighting Fedora. It's looking like that's going to happen. That news just came out. You know, uh, uh, Jamel Charlo lost, you know, the Charlo brothers. We don't know where they're at mentally. Uh, David Benavidez is supposed to be fighting David Morrell in January or February. So you're supposed to have a uh, spin door either in January or February or vice versa with David Benavidez versus David Morrell in one of those months as well. So when you look at the top PBC guys, only one that's really, really standing tall is Tank Davis. So of course they're going to be safe with him and of course they're going to make sure they get every advantage against any fighter they can fight. And you can say, why not Shakur Stevenson? Okay, well Shakur Stevenson has been injured. In fact, let's go look at the rankings. Now remember, he is the A-side. If you're the, you know, he sends out the contracts. It's his team that calls the shots. Let's go look at the rankings here. He wants to stay at 135. Lomachenko, you know, to his credit, Lomachenko going through some things. He didn't want to fight. For whatever reasons, Lomachenko citing family time. Me personally, I think that Devin Haney broke him. You know, took his soul. That's my personal opinion. William Zapata and uh, Shakur Stevenson on a fast track. Denise Baranchek, well, in my opinion, he's the weakest of all the champions, the WBO champion. Maybe, who knows? Maybe we can see Tank Davis versus Loma next. It may be uh, April or May. You know, maybe there's something going on behind the scenes there. But also, you have to think the Saudis with Turkey Allah Sheikh, they're throwing around a lot of money, too, putting the pressure on PBC. And we're seeing more stacked cards from PBC because they don't have a lot of them. Remember, they're just putting on pay-per-views these days. Yeah, they got their first Amazon card coming up. But if you've seen a lot of fighters being lent out or going to other promotional outfits. Hell, you got Stephen Colbert fighting on Pro Box next week. Look at the PBC fighters, like the fact that they gave uh, Isaac Cruz Rayo two other Saudis, put it on that card. By the way, they're supposed to fight in a rematch. That's also rumored to be taking place on uh, the uh, undercard of uh, David Benavidez and uh, David Morrell. But who could he have realistically fight it? Now, you could have said Rayo, because, but it's like you wanted Rayo to come down. You know, what sense does that really make? Now, 
you can argue, okay, well, was a con- could he have sent the contract out to Tiafimo? Could he have sent the contract out to Devin Haney? You know, I, I put it this way. I just think that he I just think that possibly they could have found a better opponent. But they would have had to give up something by maybe outsourcing, you know, fighting someone, you know, where they have to do a co-promotion or something. And PBC right now, if you really look at it, they're not, you know, people are in denial. PBC is literally one foot out the door, you know, and they're not creating new stars. You know, unless they got some 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 major plan in the works, they're dwindling out. All their top guys have been losing or they're going through something. Or they've been cashing out. Hell, what's going on with Keith Thurman? Is he cooked? Danny Garcia's cooked. Adrian Brona been gone. Errol Spence got his ass beat. We don't know if he's got a soul left. A boxing soul. Deontay Wilderwell, you know, tragic situation there. We haven't seen him since he got beat up by CCP J. Lee Zhang. And these guys were on top of the world at one point. And if it wasn't for Canelo and Tank, who really do they have? Okay, you got Mario Barrios, but guess what? Mario Barrios is fighting on uh, on our Jake Paul card. Amonestani Onus, what is he doing? Yeah, they got Jesus Ramos, Erickson Lubin, Tim Zeus taking on uh, uh, Bakram Murtazalia, but Tim Zeus also kind of a linked out fight or kind of a American promoter PBC fighter, but he's really not a PBC fighter, but he fights on PBC cards. So I guess you can say he is. I just think that this, listen, this is no disrespect to Lamont Roach, but 25, one and one with 10 KOs. He lost to Jamel Herring. And then he went life and death with a split draw against none other than this man. Boxing's first openly gay boxer, Orlando Cruz, a Miguel Cotto fighter, by the way. You know, so like he lost to this cat. So and now he's headlining the pay per view, and it's like I just saw you on Pro Box. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Maybe he can bring something different. Maybe, but when you look at it, if if Ryan Garcia couldn't do it. Isai Cruz couldn't do it. Mario Barrios couldn't do it. All guys that I would pick to beat Lamont Roach, by the way. Frank Martin couldn't do it. I'm not seeing it. And apparently, I'm not the only one. Fans are pissed. Fans are pissed. They're cooking him. They're cooking him. It's not a bad fight, you know, Lamont Roach is a, a world champion, he's smaller than Javante Davis, the problem is not many people are aware of, of who he is or, or his ability, but he can fight, I don't think it's a, a huge fight, but not a terrible one. And there you go, I feel the same way, but if, if, if he was in the same weight division, maybe, but the fact that he's making a move up, this is like, come on bro. Come on, bro. Come on. With that being said, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, We're going to be covering this card, of course. And uh, there's my thoughts. I'm picking Tank Davis probably by knockout. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.